Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very grateful to the organizers for inviting me. And uh, I'm also grateful to the chairperson to, to help me in this presentation. Metabolic syndrome has become very common all over the world. And uh, therefore, United Nations of Organization and the World Health Organization have made it an issue that it is very important to decrease metabolic syndrome. But uh, the residual risk, as you have heard in various trials, continues. And the causes of death, as you know, in the Western world, because of the non-communicable diseases, are almost 80%. And the under underlying cause may be metabolic syndrome. And the, a meeting was held by the United Nations in New York some time ago, and where all these factors were pointed out, that unless these are controlled or manipulated, perhaps it would not be possible to prevent metabolic syndrome and non-communicable diseases. The World Heart Federation has also made a point, 25 by 25, emphasizing all these risk factors. Our uh, Prime Minister also has planned for uh, Medicare 2015 with various aims for prevention of these diseases. And we, I know, to my knowledge, these are two best minds of our country, and one of them is Dr. Sabu. I, I am showing, uh, they are both scientists as well as physicians. I, his picture is a little more because he's a very nice and very friendly person. Sabu proposed that this, this lipidemia is also a disease of the brain. And there is a scientific uh, evidence to support this because uh, LDL receptors may be under influence of central suprachiasmatic nucleus circadian clock. And this diurnal variation in the PC, PCSK receptors. Now, if you look into this slide, what we were eating earlier, there were non-communicable diseases and metabolic syndrome were not there at all. Only when men started eating like that, perhaps all the problems appeared, and there have been enormous changes in diet and lifestyle during this period. Lifestyle available to early men, and therefore, these are the diets, fruits, vegetables, they were available, and they are rich in flavonols, omega-3, and amino acids, which constitute the neurons as well. And this slide emphasized the Cretan's Mediterranean diet, which is very close to Paleolithic diet. And the seven country study showed that the relation of total cholesterol with CHT mortality is continuous and graded in all the cultures. But there is a difference that these people living in the Mediterranean countries in Japan, they had the lowest mortality. Migration from hunter-gatherers to urban lifestyle causes variability in DNA. This was published in 1970s when everybody thought that DNA cannot be changed. And uh, therefore, even mutations which were considered spontaneous, there is now evidence that proteomics and genomics can cause uh, mutations because of the changes in the cosmos. Now, this slide is a summary of everything, all the lifestyle factors resulting into these problems, and the brain is involved in all these, in the pathogenesis of these diseases. So this is a very old slice by Burkitt, originally we modified, and we think that hyperinsulinemia, angiotensemia, inflammation, and angiotensin nervous system dysfunction is very, they come first resulting into these diseases, and then, so brain is involved right from beginning in all the risk factors. And if you look into these slides, urbanization, globalization, low health education, they, and they change the behavior. And there is evidence that all these behaviors are associated with brain dysfunction, which results into metabolic syndrome and all the biological risk factors. So what are the pathways in the brain 
involvement of the brain in brain-body interactions. There is not only one pathway. Sympathetic and parasympathetic activity, insulin-like growth factor, 1-2 receptors in the brain, hypothalamus, particularly now it is pointed out to be arcuate nucleus apart from neuropipe Y, and proopio-melanocortin neurons, central circadian clock, the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the brain. I would concentrate on this. And of course, the brain derived neurotrophic factor, which can control diabetes for one week by one dose. And of course, endocannabinoid receptors. So, what could be the mechanism? Emergence of uh, sorry. Now, uh, these uh, diseases, the environmental factors, they called unresolved chronic inflammation in the body, which damage the brain, suprachiasmatic nucleus, as well as the other two structures. And Milanovic group has demonstrated that all the chronic diseases, including diabetes, metabolic syndrome, they have a, a autonomic nervous system dysfunction. This finding poses the possibility that brain dysfunction appear to be a marker in the development of non-communicable diseases, and, uh, and all these drugs, antihypertensive and uh, uh, anti-diabetic drugs, they also decrease, in fact, uh, autonomic uh, nervous system dysfunction. So this uh, article was published in the last issue of the New England Journal of Medicine, and the message is same. Common pathway to organ injury, inflammation, initiation of the response driven by primary injury, activation, effector cells, and all these things. You must read this article if you are interested in the sciences. So this is a diagram developed by me and Dr. Sabu, how environmental factors interact with autonomic nervous system, circadian description of metabolism, and this is associated with pro-inflammatory damage of various organs of the brain. And this results into uh, various uh, neurotransmitter increase, and this uh, again neurotransmitters, this results into metabolic syndrome. Now, this is a very, our planet revolves around its axis, causing day and night cycle in 24 hours. And this is the sun. So, we are all the times moving. The organism, including humans, ensure that physiological processes are carried out at right time of the day. And this was published in Nature. Much later, Dr. Halbert could not publish a paper in the Nature, and he remained a Nobel Prize nominee twice. So the circadian clock resets every day over all physiological metabolic processes, including sleep-wake cycles and temperature, and also the, all the functions of the organs, every day they are altered. So human evolutional basis of circadian rhythm. The Homo erectus and Homo sapiens were getting up early in the morning to preserve their progeny and there is a release of testosterone in the morning. Then they were running and hunting at sunrise and going to the river for hunting. Dr. Halbach who died in, uh, two years ago at the age of 93 years, the word circadian, circadian cardiology, chronobiology, chronomics, chronomes, they were all developed by him. Uh, so in 1970, Dr. Halberg demonstrated that RNA, DNA, there is a continuous variability in their function. And today, there is a evidence for that. Both RNA, DNA vary according to time structures and control various biological processes. And this slide shows how the light influences the suprachiasmatic nucleus, causes uh, entrainment of the clock, and the metabolism in the adipocyte, liver, gut, heart muscle, and pancreas. This is being manipulated by this clock, and this, it is being disturbed if there is a disturbance in the circadian rhythm of our uh, lifestyle. This slide again shows the uh, effect of suprachiasmatic clock on peripheral clocks, the superior research signals in peripheral tissue clocks and changes its metabolism, just to emphasize that. Very important, effect of feeding regimen on circadian rhythm of metabolic functions. Experimental studies have shown that if there is an intermittent fasting, 
Both supraacademic nucleus as well as the peripheral ear clocks are involved. In calorie restriction, that means eating once in a day, also influences both the things. But if there is a restricted feeding, the only acts only on the peripheral extraterrian clocks. So circadian rhythm decrease or increase in weight of our metabolism is high in the morning. And French Halberg revolutionized the field of nutrition by his demonstration that when we eat can make the difference between life and death in experimental animals and between weight loss or weight gain. So first human trial was conducted by Professor Halberg while dinner was associated with weight gain. Breakfast was associated with weight loss which is shown here in these slides and also a lot of very many animal experiments. I'm not going into details of these experimental studies. This is the clinical study. This is the only clinical study I came across in, by Stoth in 15 subjects. One meal administered in the early evening for eight weeks. Systolic, diastolic blood pressure were significantly lower. Body fat, body fat mass, total body water were significantly declined in the one meal per day compared to three meals per day. And this is possibly because of the brain stimulation of the brain-related mechanisms. The Framingham study showed that uh, there is an increased heart, uh, heart rate variability, decreased heart rate variability when there is a uh, in presence of metabolic syndrome. So metabolic syndrome appears to be a disease of the brain by this study as well. Effects of wild duck egg in fent milk versus dairy milk in babies below two years. This was a randomized controlled trial, factorial design. 20 babies less than two years age were randomized to two groups. And half in each group were in administered 50 to 60% of milk in the evening and half in the morning. And body glucose by glucose were obtained after one hour of feeding. No difference in the food intakes in the two groups. Weight gain were significantly both, but lower in the dairy milk group than in the intervention group with egg milk. Corresponding changes in the waist circumferences were also beneficial, more in the ovulipid group than in the dairy milk group. Postprandial glucose was decreased, which means this can prevent metabolic syndrome. Just simply altering the eating time can change, can prevent metabolic syndrome. Yes, weight gain was significantly higher. So a larger weight gain was achieved by PM than AM feeding, consistent with Professor Halberg. In babies with undernutrition, majority of the available food may be administered in the evening for weight gain. However, in babies with obesity, which is a present problem of metabolic syndrome, majority of the food may be consumed in the morning. What are the adverse effects of lifestyle factors on bone body interactions? And there is a research available that Western diet, tobacco, alcoholism, geomagnetic activity, sedentary behavior, all, all uh, these factors inhibit brain-derived neurotrophic factors, IGF-1-2, uh, vascular endothelial growth factor and neuronal growth factors. And this slide uh, demonstrates increased BDNF and neuronal growth factor by parasympathetic activity, but if there is a more sympathetic activity, they are decreased. There is experimental evidence. Very important slide. Now this slide again shows various brain parts which are under influence of this inflammation and vagus nerve is responsible for parasympathetic and uh, other sympathetic now for sympathetic activity. And they all influence the metabolism in all these organs. So possible mechanism, increased sympathetic activity in presence of lower para, increased secretion of catecholamines, neurotransmitter, oxidative stress, they damage the arcuate nucleus and POMC neurons, and uh, also possibly supraacademic and clock, it is proposed that these factors in conjunction with underlying deficiency of long chain PUFA and flavonoids and coenzyme Q may damage the arc, these uh, brain organs, especially during critical periods of development and uh, resulting into metabolic syndrome rapidly. Lower uh, insulin, BDNF and non mice appear to be risk factors for cardiovascular disease and diabetes. And this diagram shows how secondary neurons they are under influence. 
During regulation of peptide and metabolism, this is about how the POMC and Europeptide Act. Arque clinitulus metabolizes long chain fatty acids, produces long chain fatty acids, and then penepatides reduces all these factors, or perhaps melanocartin, MSH, all these factors. A gouty gene is very important. Please study about a gouty gene because this is related to metabolic syndrome. Expression of a gouty gene has been demonstrated to cause uh, metabolic uh, syndrome in the mice, yellow gouty mouse. And this is the arcuate nucleus where ghrelin, POMC, leptin, and they are under influence of involvement of the arcuate nucleus. This is again to emphasize that. And this is again how a hypothalamus downgrade and coordinate outputs and feeding behavior and metabolism in various organs of our body. So this experiment we conducted in Slovakia. And we found that uh, supplement with omega-3 and coenzyme Q were helpful in altering the, the metabolism and uh, causing decrease in hyperglycemia and obesity. BDNF is a future drug for management of diabetes. And it is also, there is a BDNF deficiency who has been described in these conditions. Polyphenolics in obesity have also been in very many experimental studies by Wang have demonstrated that these polyphenols also are responsible for brain function, neuronal functions, and of course, adipocyte functions. And they modulate, these are the mechanisms. I'm not going into details. How epigenetics are modulated by polyphenolics. So what are the causes of weight loss? Wang has demonstrated in very many experimental studies how polyphenols do that. Can physical activity influence brain biomarkers? Yes, it has been observed, regular exercise. Many epigenetics modulators are there. So what are the goals? We published the SOFIA declaration in the nutrition in 2014, and we re-emphasized it in Varanasi, uh, by, and how we assess the diet and lifestyle factors by questionnaires have been pointed out. In brief, metabolic syndrome can develop because of the dysfunction of brain's arcuate nucleus, neuropeptide Y, POMC neurons, insulin receptors. Apart from these, BDMF deficiency can also predispose metabolic syndrome, which should be considered protective, and these nutrients therefore should be considered pro protective against brain dysfunction which can result into cardiovascular disease, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and there are references for this. This Professor Halberg, he died in, at the, I'm a fellow in the University of Minnesota because I was able to produce about 1,000 records, seven, day to, uh, seven days uh, monitoring of blood pressure and heart rate, and Dr. Vama is, has been my collaborator, and now Sahu has also joined. Thank you very much indeed.